Hello, welcome to our weekly news roundup where we provide you with some of the most interesting things that has happened last week. So Frankie, mm. what are some of the most interesting things last week? Well, wow, last week was definitely interesting. You have things like the government talk about the rice crisis that we are currently experiencing. Then, you know, the, the Prime Minister has brought back 20 billion worth of MOU in the market. Oh yeah, now he's known as the best salesman from Malaysia, right? Oh yeah, man. And we are going to drill down into it. So let's not waste time and go straight into our first news. All right, let's go. Okay, so during Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim's visit to China in conjunction with the China ASEAN Expo and the China ASEAN Business and Investment Summit, he managed to secure three MOUs worth 19.48 billion ringgit. And here are the breakdowns of these three deals. So the first MOU is between this company called Chita Global Berhad and the Chinese company Shanghai Su's Environment. This project is worth 15 billion ringgit to explore the development of energy power plants, mainly in Malaysia. Oh, Shanghai Sus. Uh. Sus. Sus, uh. very sus right, the company then. <laughs> Actually, I never heard of this company before, but let's see what is the interesting thing here, okay? Now, fun fact, Yang Dipertuan Agung is a substantial shareholder of Chita Global. And our king has a 7.97% stake in this company as at June 2023. Wow, interesting. Mm. Mm. Now, the second MOU is worth 2.34 billion ringgit. This is between PM Access World and Beidou Gulf International Port Group on matters related to warehousing and logistics corporations to promote the new international land sea trade corridor between China and also Malaysia. And the the third deal is between Saim Dabi Oil International Limited and Guangxi Beidou Gulf Port Group. And this deal is worth 2.5 billion ringgit to construct a trading and distribution center for refined palm oil and shortening in Qingzhou, China. The next news, Economy Minister Rafizi Ramli said Malaysians are spending a higher proportion of their income on eating out and takeaway compared to fellow Asian countries like South Korea. Well, in fact, he actually said that Malaysians are addicted to eating out and that actually drew a lot of interesting comments online. Nonetheless, by facts and data, on average, local households here in Malaysia spend about one-third of our disposable income on cooked food or takeaway versus countries like South Korea, which only spend about 12.8% and Singapore only 8.4%. Well, I guess this is one of the reasons why Malaysians feel the pinch of inflation. Wait, but having said that, maybe it's because Malaysians are just not earning that much and our know, buying power not that strong. <laughs> well, anyway, don't worry, it's not our fault actually. So, Rafizi actually went on saying that the past policies, such as the shift from agriculture, have increased the cost of food in Malaysia as the country rely on more imported food and farmers are not properly incentivized to produce goods such as ginger and chilli locally. The structure of the nation's economy and wages in the past have also added to the habits of the nation. Well, at the end of the day, like we just said, the obvious solution is to raise the wage of Malaysians. Yeah! Money, money! But unfortunately, this is not going to happen overnight. Lah. So, Rafizi said that the government's initiative of moving from broad-based fuel subsidy to its targeted scheme will improve the lives of all Malaysians, except those who get less subsidy. Lah. <laughs> so, what do you guys think? Do you think that we are addicted to eating out, that's why we are getting into this issue? Or is it because our buying power has shrinks so much? Or maybe because people think that they have a lot of EPF money that they can withdraw to you. So, it doesn't matter if they eat out or not, right? Just joking, but jokes aside, economist Muhammad Abdul Khalid, who is a former Kazana Research Institute director, he gave his opinion on the past and present government policies at the KL and Selangor Chinese Assembly Hall 100th Anniversary Conference. Here are some highlights on what he has said on EPF withdrawal. Khalid called it the biggest mistake this country has ever made since independence and a silly decision pinning the blame on former finance minister Tengku Zafro, who is now the MITI minister. Lah, right? Blame game going on. <laughs> and not just him alone, and also the former prime minister Ismail Sabri. Now, the EPF withdrawal has led to the widened wealth gap between the rich and the poor, according to Khalid. He urged for a more holistic social safety net where all workers, regardless of formal or informal sector, must contribute to a retirement scheme. 
Do you know that in Malaysia, right, only 60% of workers contribute to EPF? Whereas in Singapore, our neighbour, 99% of their employed population is covered. That's right. I think when it comes to this particular subject of EPF, the truth is there are many Malaysians who rather not pay EPF whenever they can. I've heard of many news where actually they will go up to their employer and say, can you just don't pay me, don't help me pay the EPF so I can get more take home themselves. In fact, in Singapore right now, if you do not contribute to the CPF, you are unable to buy a HDB flat. Oh, wow. Maybe, do you think that should be something that Malaysia implement as well? Hmm, tell us in the comments below. Nonetheless, let's go to the topic about rice crisis. Agriculture and Food Security Minister Mat Salbu said that the move to empower the domestic trade and cost of living ministries personnel in the matters related to the enforcement duty of the current rice supply issue will only be considered if the situation becomes more severe. Ah? Huh? Only take action later. <laughs> Maybe we'll be too late. Uh. So what is the immediate solution right now? Actually, I also don't know. But according to him, at this moment, he signaled that under this situation, is still under control. So recently, Putrajaya actually announced the Baras Rama Initiative. Well, whatever things get more expensive, we always have Menu Rama for help! Here is where imported white rice will be sold at around 13 ringgit to 14 ringgit per 5 kilogram pack as a short term stopgap measure to mitigate the low supply of locally produced cheap rice in the market. And when it comes to Selangor, our Menteri Besar Amiruddin Shari said that any rice supply shortage in the area across the state can be quickly resolved within 24 hours. Fui, so, jo. for example, if today you go to a local supermarket and they already run out of rice, what you can do? You can lodge a report to the Kawal Satya Party and Veras Negeri Selangor at their agency hotline within the day. What's the number? Uh, I'm also not so sure. You have to Google it lah. <laughs> anyway, once you make a call, the rice supply at that location will be replenished within 24 hours. Hopefully, when you call the hotline, somebody picks up as well. Wait, yeah, <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> if you have ever tried calling the hotline, maybe you can let us know. How does it work? Anyway, when it comes to this matter of rice crisis, they have also said that part of the big reason is because people panic buy. Remember that time the toilet paper issue during COVID? Yeah. Yeah. So don't panic by la guys. Bro, the whole nation have a rice crisis looming over our head. Kelantan on the other hand seem to be unbothered by this thing because their demand for local rice is actually very low and the stocks for local rice is always available. Mm. Eh? Does this mean that people in Kelantan don't eat rice one? Ah? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Kelantanese actually prefer smuggled Thai rice as the quality of the rice is actually way more superior than our local rice according to some sources. Well, I guess kudos to Kelantanese for having better quality of life in terms of rice consumption. And is it the smuggling part that makes it nicer or is it just <laughs> Thai rice is nicer? Oh, I don't know. But that is definitely the preference of Kalantani's friends. Yeah, if you have tried some smuggled Thai rice before, do let us know in the comments as well. Anyways, Economy Minister Rafizi Ramli has warned that if the world crude oil price reaches $100 per barrel, the Malaysian government may need to bear more than 100 billion ringgit in subsidies annually. Oh, that's a lot of money, my friend! Definitely. He emphasised the importance of targeted subsidies as part of the effort to strengthen the country's fiscal position in the face of rising oil prices. Now, Rafizi said that the government will use the primary database as the main mechanism for the targeted subsidy. Ooh, looks like we have a plan already. Yeah, I'm wondering how they're going to execute this whole thing because it's really interesting and really complicated. Anyway, that's about a quarter of Malaysia's 2023 budget, which is 388.1 billion ringgit. Not cheap. Now, the next interesting story has got to do with Johor, my dear Southern friends. I bet you have recently heard about the good news by our PMX talking about the Johor Singapore Special Economic Zone. According to the Johor Menteri Besar, he said that the term of reference for establishing the Johor Singapore Special Economic Zone will be wrapped up by next month. 
Ah, so those of you who are living in Johor and thinking about traveling to Singapore to work or like coming over Singapore to Johor, uh, yeah, whatever it is, as long as you are there, you may have a keen interest to follow up on the news. Nonetheless, for those of you who do not know what is this, the Singapore Special Economic Zone SEZ was mooted back during the 16 Malaysia Singapore Joint Ministerial Committee for Iskandar Malaysia. I don't know why government like to put all these long, long names, right? All the long acronyms. Anyway, apart from the setup of the SEZ, Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim announced that the Forest City project would be designated as a special financial zone that enjoys perks such as multiple entry visa, fast track entry for those working from Singapore, and a flat income tax rate of 15% for knowledge workers. Ooh, two good news there. Number one, Forest City finally could be seeing a revival. And the second thing is the good news of the tax rate for knowledge worker. Anyway, I guess moving ahead is going to be Majula Bangsa Johor, Malaysia. Speaking about tax, Economy Minister again Rafrizi Ramli said the implementation of GST to widen the government's revenue base would hit lower income household very hard. I agree. However, he agreed that GST is the most efficient tax to combat tax evasion. He did not rule out imposing a consumption tax, which is GST, but this has to be done carefully and the impact has to be analysed first. Otherwise, it will become a regressive tax in Malaysia. Mm, I totally agree. In fact, I think that at the moment GST is going to be implemented, the first thing that's going to happen is everyone's going to increase their price again. Oh yeah. Separately, Prime Minister Anwar told Bloomberg at the Milken Institute 10 Annual Asia Summit that the government first need to reduce subsidies for the rich before bringing back GST. Ah, those who are rich, be careful. Rafizi shared last week that targeted subsidies will be implemented next year as the next step is for the main database system to open to the public for verification of their social economic status. I'm wondering how are people going to update this? Are they just going to key in themselves like how much am I earning in my household? Because if they do that, likely they'll lie, right? Yeah, that's a chance of that. Mm. Mm. Do you guys got any idea of how this Padu is going to be implemented? If you do have any idea or any recommendation, maybe you can leave it in the comment as well. Do you know that in ASEAN, Malaysia is one of the three countries besides Brunei and Myanmar to not have implemented GST. You know, the rest of our neighbouring countries in ASEAN, they have already implemented consumption tax even before 2000. So here's the question, right? Mm. Do we really need to follow every single country to actually have GST or is it really the good thing to have? I think we should have something that suits Malaysians. So not necessarily we have to go really go down into the GST path. Well, I also don't know what we should do. Maybe you can tell us in the comments below. Anyway, the last news is of someone that we are kind of familiar with, especially you were investing back during the COVID time. Mm. Andy Hall, the migrants' right activist. He has expressed concern over the rapid rise of Bangladeshi workers entering Malaysia, especially because many of them ended up stranded upon arrival. And this is bad enough because it already cost Bangladeshi migrants more than 6,000 USD per person as a recruitment cost to actually come to Malaysia. This lead them into a debt bondage because of this crazy fee. Imagine you want to come to Malaysia work, you need to pay 6,000 USD. Before you work, you already come with a negative number. Yeah, that is like taking a PT PTN to study at that. But it's a good thing for PTPTN lah, huh? <laughs> Another point of concern raised by Andy Hall is the number of Bangladeshi entering the country far outpaced other nationalities entering into Malaysia to work. More than 300 of 450,000 approved workers that come to Malaysia since the labour market reopened in 2021. And another 120,000 more in the process of travelling to Malaysia in August. That's a total of 420 Bangladeshi workers who came and coming into Malaysia. And guess what? In Bangladesh, in the month of August, they recorded the highest number of labour export in a month ever. Over 138,600 workers leaving Bangladesh to work in another country. And of which about one third of this number are actually coming to Malaysia. So we are their main export nation. 
probably is Malaysia my second home. Anyway, these are some of the interesting headlines from last week's news. If you like this weekly roundup, give us a thumbs up in the comment and we will make more such video in the future. See you in our next video. See you guys.